Hi, everybody. Former librarian and avid mystery devourer, Corrine Smith here, offering you some tips on getting the most out of reading the books in the Chief Inspector Armand Gamache series written by Louise Penny. And this video is spoiler free. If you haven't read the whole series or if you haven't even started yet, no worries. I'm not going to give away any important information and just cover things in general terms. And I am directing most of my comments here today to those of you who are reading the series in English. Like many of you, I suspect I started reading series books back in my childhood with Nancy Drew, Bobsy Twins. Mm, you know, didn't we all? <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, in the 1970s, there was the American Bicentennial series by John Jakes. Yeah. And then uh, not necessarily mysteries, but at least series books, you know, they start you with the first book and then they snag you and you have to read all the rest. And then, of course, as an adult, uh, really getting into mysteries, I was hooked by Sue Grafton, Nevada Bar, a whole lot of other authors. Uh, and then I found... Louise Penny. Her first Armand Gabash book came out in 2005. It's called Still Life. As I record this video at the end of 2021, there are 17 books in the series and the last one so far is The Madness of Crowds. Now I've given this some thoughts and I think there are three main reasons why these books are popular. And I wanna share those with you today, give you a couple of tips related to each one. Number one, first reason why I think these books are so popular is that they are set in a slightly exotic location, rural Quebec. And you might say, Quebec is exotic? Well, yeah. <laughs> to Americans, it is. To those of us who live in the United States, it is. Now, you know, obviously, Quebec and Canada are part of North America. They're right there. They're easy to get to. But, you know, when when we Americans visit Quebec, it's it seems like a totally different world. It really does. Then there's the mystique of the people being bilingual. You never know whether there's going to be a conversation in French or in English. Here's a tip. If you're in Quebec, it's probably going to be French. All right. So the Gamache books are set in the eastern townships, which lie basically above the Vermont border. This is an opportunity for me to show you maps. I love maps. Here's my road atlas of Quebec. Look at that. There it is. It's huge. Okay. But on this page, they pull out Montreal and uh, that part of the St. Lawrence River. And so the eastern townships lie right around here, north of Vermont, you know, just west of the top part of Maine. Now, an American road atlas like that one is not going to say Eastern townships. So don't even look for it. What you need to find instead is a Quebec atlas, a Canadian atlas, and then it will say Eastern townships in that area, if you really want to know, okay? Um, now, if you've visited Montreal or Quebec City, uh, you'll understand a little bit more about the landscape that the characters are moving through. And of course, if you do go up and visit, you're gonna probably need maps like that. Yeah, I know, I'm not a GPS person, I'm a maps person. Anyway, uh, I've visited Quebec several times in the last couple of years and like it a lot. Uh, can't wait to go back someday, I only wish, I knew French. I have to work on that. So a number of the Gamache books are set in winter. So it is also helpful to you if you have experienced a northern winter yourself. Now, maybe not a Canadian winter, maybe not a Quebec winter, but at least a northern winter, at least a period of time where you were stuck in home uh, for a couple of days uh, because of snow. Okay, uh, and it may also be helpful to you 
if you know how to drive in snow or if you have driven or ridden in a car or in a vehicle in snow because Armand and sometimes his closest officers, Jean-Guy Beauvoir and Isabelle Lacoste, regularly have to drive to and from the provincial police headquarters in Montreal, you'll be able to relate to and appreciate that kind of challenge if you have undertaken it yourself sometime. Now, of course, I know you're waiting for this, all of, almost all of the action centers in the fictional village of Three Pines. Here's an aside, full disclosure, my grandparents' farm in Allentown, Pennsylvania, outside of Allentown, Pennsylvania, used to be called Three Pines because of the three big spruce trees that grew in front of the house. So I was already hooked with the name of the place just by the thinnest, thinnest of personal connections here have absolutely nothing to do with Quebec, Louise, or Armand. <laughs> but Three Pines, okay, count me in. Because Three Pines is fictional, it's not gonna appear on any of those maps that I just showed you. And famously in the books, it doesn't appear on maps either for some odd reason, you know? Uh, in fact, people usually find the village just by accident, you know, by happy coincidence, thus leaning again to its image of being slightly exotic and leading you to wonder if it even exists. No, Three Pines is a secluded place, but it is a warm and inviting one. And it has interesting people living there. We will talk about a few of them in a couple of minutes. <clears throat> now, even though that's basically where the books are set, not all of the books take place in the village of Three Pines or even by extension in nearby Montreal. So I consider this the murder she wrote syndrome. You know, not all of those tragedies could happen in Cabot Cove, Maine because they, they had a limited population, right? But they could happen wherever Jessica Fletcher happened to be. So that kind of same thing that happens with Armand Gamache here. So the books who are not, the books that are not focused on Three Pines. Number four, a rule against murder. It is set in the Eastern Townships, but in a rustic retreat that is located at Lake Mesa Whippy, which is a little far uh, away from Three Pines within, within range, but it's still not exactly Three Pines. Number six, Bury Your Dead, takes place mostly in old Quebec City. Number eight, The Beautiful Mystery, takes place at a monastery in very remote, rural Quebec that you can only get to by plane or by boat. I mean, talk about exotic. I mean, <laughs> really, really. Number 10, The Long Way Home, takes place uh, often in the Charlevoix region of Eastern Quebec, uh, following the Great St. Lawrence Seaway, the St. Lawrence River, out towards the Atlantic Ocean uh, and in, in that region. And that one, yeah, you, you may wanna look at a map for that one especially. And then number 16, all the devils are here, are set in Paris, is set in Paris, France, okay? Otherwise, the action takes mostly takes place mostly in Three Pines. Louise Penny lives in the Eastern Townships herself. And the place that is considered to be her hometown bookstore is Brome Lake Books in Knowlton, Quebec. So if you go there, either online or in person, you will find a whole corner devoted to her and the books. And uh, so you'll find the books, you also find merchandise related to Gamash and Three Pines. And online, they even have free maps that you can download that relate to the books, including one of Three Pines, in case you don't want your imagination to figure out the way the village is set up. There's a map for you. <gasps> maps, I love maps. Thank you, Brome Lake Books. So that's where you go for the good stuff. And uh, so that's enough about the setting, I think. Three Pines, an exotic location, yeah. 
The second reason why I think these books are so popular are because of the characters. They're three-dimensional. They're not flimsy or superficial or cardboard cutouts that just take up space. You know, and they don't fit into stere traditional stereotypes either. You know, in other mystery stories, the characters uh, go in a little bit about their daily lives, but then there's this big thing that happens and they're focused on solving this big thing, right? And then usually there's a secondary plot that involves somebody else or something that seems to be not connected at all. But then gradually as the story goes, eventually those things match up. That seems to be what happens in a lot of stories. And so the characters are focused on, you know, maybe one or two or three things. When's, when's the last time you had the option of being able to focus on one thing or two or three? You know, humans are more complex than this, aren't they? We've got lots of stuff going on. And a lot of times there's no easy answers or simple solutions, you know, and, and we're all impacted by so many things, what's going on in the world, of course, but we're also impacted by our own pasts, our own backstory, our pasts impact our present and our future. And um, we're influenced by what our friends are doing, what the people around us are doing, our coworkers, our bosses, things we know that they're doing, things that they're doing behind the scenes, we have no idea that they're doing. Uh, you know, not it can't all be resolved in one episode or three or four hundred pages. And this is what you find in uh, Louise's novels uh, that, you know, these people are not just their jobs or not just where they live. They are fully figured people and uh, we get to know them pretty much right away. And we get to know them even better as the series goes on. And Louise is quick to say that these books are mostly about community and relationships. So pay particular attention to that as you go along. Three Pines may be an isolated village seemingly removed from the rest of civilization, but the people aren't. They are smart and savvy. They are fully aware of what's going on in the world. And mostly they support one another. You know, uh, you think about it, Nobody's in charge of Three Pines. There's no mayor or town council or any kind of government in sight, except of course, for when the provincial police force has to come in. And the people here are a mix of Quebecois and English or Anglos. And so let's meet a couple of them, all right? They're all wonderful people, but let's just focus on a few. Main character, of course, is Chief Inspector Armand Gamache who works for the provincial police force in Quebec. <clears throat> and the name of this force is the Sûreté de Quebec. And that is spelled S-U-R-E-T-E, -E, Sûreté. To we who speak English, it looks like Sûreté. It's not, it's Sûreté. Uh, kind of looks like the word security, if you can think of it that way, if that helps. Armand Gamache is married to a librarian, a wonderful woman named Ren Marie. And then, like I mentioned, uh, two of his closest officers are Jean-Guy Bouvois and Isabelle Lacoste. And they are called to Three Pines to, or to anywhere in rural Quebec where a crime has been committed. And then they will set up a temporary command post at that site so they can investigate right there. They may bring in uh, a variety of other officers or experts as they need to. As for the villagers of Three Pines, my tip here is to pay particular attention to two of them. They're all wonderful, but two of them, Clara Morrow and Ruth Zardo, and for two different reasons. Clara is probably the main character from Three Pines. Sometimes she may seem as though she's an unlikely choice, but I think when you think about it, it makes sense. Ruth, Ruth Zardo, if you like sarcasm and puns and snarky but truthful comments at all moments of the day, you pay particular attention to Ruth. You saddle right down and sit right beside her. Uh, give her more credence than a casual vis visitor might. and. Um, yeah, listen to Ruth. You know, 
there is one semi-official leadership role in the town and the villagers decided to give it to Ruth. And this makes sense when you think about it. Also pay attention to any time these people use the word fine, F-I-N-E, as in I'm fine. Sounds like a casual statement, but it's an inside joke to the villagers and eventually to the police force. So pay attention, that's an inside joke. And don't we all with our friends have inside jokes, some kind of word or story, or you only have to mention one thing and everybody knows what you're talking about and they're laughing? This is an inside joke, F-I-N-E, pay attention. If you're reading these books in English, then you have to suspend your disbelief a bit, really, if you think about it. Uh, and you may not even realize that you're doing it because if Armand and Jean Guy were real characters in real life, real people, wouldn't they probably be speaking French to one another? Probably. So we read their conversations in English. So you do have to kind of set that fact aside, either consciously or unconsciously. Um, French words do show up a lot, as well they should in books that are situated in Quebec. And um, because we readers like to be able to know how to pronounce these words, I mean, you know, basically when you open up a, up a book and you're reading it, you're reading it out loud to yourself in your head, okay? Louise has thoughtfully put a pronunciation guide on her website. So I highly recommend going to louisepenny.com this is the opening page. You see a bar across the top. In the middle is a pronunciation guide. Click on that. You find a couple of files that she recorded uh, about the first couple of books in the series. And she voices everything in French and explains how and why. And you can hear her voice, which is, is lovely too. And so she tells you the characters, uh, the kinds of phrases that she uses. Uh, a lot of the French words are curse words. You learn them pretty quickly, which is kind of cool. And then after I really listen to that, and after that, then you will know how to say Cirte de Quebec instead of Street, right? Okay, and you'll know as you go along. The third reason why I think these books are so popular is because of Louise's compelling writing style. You know, she's an accomplished wordsmith. Sometimes you just have to pause and appreciate her good prose and unique turns of phrase and how she sequences the events, especially as you're getting closer to the end, you know, going back and forth between very critical moments and places and people. Uh, but I think what's most important here is that she has chosen to tell these stories in third person, from the third person point of view. That way, she and we can tap into more than one character's minds and actions at any given time. We can pull back our cameras and focus on multiple scenes with multiple characters. Not that we'll see it all, of course, you know, that's part of the process and part of the mystery. Give us enough information to go on so we can try to figure out what happened and what's going to happen next, but not all of it. Of course, we're never gonna see it all of it until the end and maybe not even then. For example, another point of view. If, if we were told these, these uh, stories in first person from Armand's point of view, then we wouldn't know what any of the other characters are thinking, you know, Clara or Ruth or, or Jean Guy. And, and I like to hear what Jean Guy is thinking because a lot of times it can be pretty funny and he gives, he gives a different perspective to what's going on. Okay, and we wouldn't want to, we wouldn't be able to get that if we were just focused in first person on Armand. Um, if these were told from Clara's point of view, that would be totally different. And we wouldn't get to know what Armand and, and the others are thinking. And, and we'd be in the studio a lot and we'd have paint all over ourselves. And, and that would be really limiting. And if we were told these stories from Ruth's point of view, <laughs> just be one word over and over and over and over and over. And I'm not gonna say it here. Um, so when you think about it, third person point of view where we can get a fuller picture, this is the perfect way to captivate us 
you know. Um, and Arman himself is a different kind of criminal investigator. He spends a great deal of time in his own head, thinking a lot before deciding what action to take. Some of this deliberation, again, we get to see. We don't get to see all of it. We don't get to understand all of it. And then often what happens you know, at the end is we think we know, but it could be totally unexpected and unpredictable. Again, this is part of the magic of the mystery story. Give the readers enough to go on, not enough to reveal the truth too soon. And as far as the writing goes, it takes a practiced hand to devise such an experience. And Louise is obviously good at doing this. I, you know, excellent at doing this. Sometimes you may reach a point in the book where you want to close the covers and put the book aside just to think about what's been happening. You know, give yourself a little time out. Think what happened. Think what might, what might lie ahead. Uh, sometimes you put the book down because the end is coming too soon and you don't want to leave the characters or the story too quickly. No, wow. Uh, it again takes a compelling writer to evoke that much emotion and passion in the reader. So great setting, great characters, great presentation. I think we can all agree on, on those, right? Now, here comes my biggest recommendation for you for reading these books. You may or may not agree, I'm telling you this right now. These books are all meant to be standalones and uh, in our contemporary mystery series world, that's the way publishers and writers present them. Standalones so that you can pick up any one of them, you can dive right in, you can understand the characters and the setting and the things that are going on. Uh, you can start the series at any point, mix and match your way through them as the books come to you uh, in any order. And my recommendation and my definitive answer to this is no, <laughs> no, you cannot mix and match these. I don't think you should. Here's why. <laughs> Here's why. For the first five books in the series, you know, sure, <laughs> have at it. I still think you should start with Still Life, the first one. But the first five books in the series, okay. I'll give you that one. But this is a big putt. Between book number five, The Brutal Telling, and book number six, Bury Your Dead, between the books, when we were doing other things, a major event takes place for these people. A major event read that in all capital letters, okay? And we only learn about it in book six, Bury Your Dead, as Armand is trying to grasp and deal with what has happened, okay? This is the literary equivalent, taking a big rock, dropping it into a body of water and watching the ripples flow out. Because what happened in that event between the two books impacts, everything else that happens in the series, okay? It is, all, it is at least always in the background. Sometimes it comes to the foreground, okay? And if you read any of the other subsequent books first, you will find references to what happened at the factory or how people react when a specific video keeps popping up online. And you may wonder, what does that mean? Well, the answers start in Bury Your Dead. And so my advice is, okay, first five books, fine. Once you hit book six, you've got to read them in order. Otherwise, you get those scenes about the factory or the video, and you may be confused. Book six on, read them in order, please. Another major event happens in book 13 glass houses. Again, another major event it happens in this book. Uh, technically, I think it happens a little before, but it happens in this book. And again, rock, 
ripples. And it affects the next couple of books and really the rest. So, you know, this is really like real life, right? Uh, not every challenge can be tied up, neatly dealt with in a short period of time or even 300 and 400 pages. Real life can be messy, right? So it can be messy for all of these people, both in the Cirte de Quebec and in Three Pines, okay, depending on what's going on. And for Armand Gamash, trying to make sense of it all in his head a lot. So again, first five books, I, I really think you ought to start with Still Life. It's number one. First five books, okay, fine, mix and match. But book six on, please read them in order. Book 13 on, please read them in order. And actually, when you think about it, <laughs> if you give this a lot of thought, a major event happens to Armand before the series even starts. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And this is like real life too. You don't meet somebody at the most crucial time in their life, do you? Probably not. So something major happens to Armand before the series even starts. And we learn about it in dribs and drabs as we go along. So really, <laughs> read as much of the series in order as you can but book six on book 13 on <laughs> please uh that is that is my big recommendation and again these are my own opinions you can agree or disagree but uh i i've read these books all several times now in fact well, we'll get to that in a minute. If you can't get enough, let me pause and say, if you can't get enough of all of these books and you're eager for something more, especially if we're between books and one hasn't come out yet, there really, there was a novella that came out uh, between books six and seven, and it's called The Hangman. It's a Canadian publication, uh, came out as a, as a uh, collaborative effort between Goodreads and ABC Life Literacy Canada. It's only 87 pages long or something like that. Uh, it stars Armand Gamache. You can read this one in any order. You don't have to worry about what happened in those major books, okay? Uh, you can read this one in between any of them. It came out chronologically in between six and seven. And you can finish that one in a single afternoon. Uh, uh, and like I said, uh, and you can probably find it, if you can't find it easily in your usual outlet, you can maybe find it from your local library system or from a used book dealer online, uh, The Hangman, The Hangman. And you learn something interesting about Canada and Quebec that you may not have known before. Okay, there's a teaser for you. So obviously I like these books a lot and what I do when I hear that a new one is planned and they set a date for when the next one comes out, I mark it on my calendar. And then I walk the weeks back about two months and I reread a couple of the books leading up to it so that I can time it so that when the new books book comes out, I am seamlessly ready to go right into it and caught up with the characters and their adventures and I'm ready to find them on their new experience. Okay. And I can, I can, I can be in that mode. Uh, before this in my life, I rarely reread any book that I had already read, rarely. Uh, but I feel compelled to do that with this series because I like the characters so much and I want to, I want to get back to them, get into the mood and, uh, and uh, catch up again. And so when 18, number 18 is announced, I'm probably going to go back to number 13, knowing glass houses, knowing that there's a major event in here. And I know what it is. I'm not telling you, but I know it has ripples. And so I'm probably going to start with number 13, two months in advance and work my way up so that I can move right on to number 18. Again, uh, this is my approach. Yours, yours can be different, obviously. We're all, we're all different. So um, I'm assuming 
you enjoy reading these books as much as I do, and that's why you're watching. Thank you very much for joining me here and hearing my take on all of this, um, my opinions, uh, which are not for the publisher or the author or any of the official people of the series, okay? And I also have to thank Louise Penny for creating people and a place that we really enjoy spending a lot of time with. A lot of time. And we will be eager to watch for the next ones, plural, <laughs> to come around. So thanks again for watching. My name's Corrine Smith, and I'll see you again next time. Happy reading, everybody.